The Senator from Tennessee. Thank you, Madam President. Well, it appears the White House had good reason to wait until the Friday before Memorial Day to release their budget proposal. They couldn't afford a full week's news cycle any more than the American people can afford to fulfill the wish list items President Biden is asking them to pay for. It is a very long list. And I think it's safe to say my Democratic colleagues are trying to make the most of the next year and a half. They know that time is not on their side, nor are the American people. There really is something for every faction of the left. Here are a few of the items that are contained in this Biden boondoggle <coughs> of a budget. The environmental lobby did a great job these past few months. They're more than taken care of with more electric car subsidies and a $936 million payout towards environmental justice initiatives. We also have more funding to expand the Department of Education. If you think that more government is what your child's educational experience has been missing, well, this is the budget for you. But if you are fed up with the way teachers unions have treated children in the classroom, if you are fed up with schools that have been in lockdown, you want to pay close attention to what I'm talking about today. Apparently, the good people over at the Department of Health and Human Services have time on their hands. Bear in mind, it is your money that is paying them to do the job where they have time on their hands. Now, they'll be switching gears from pandemic response to a new focus on environmental extremism, reparations, and gutting the Second Amendment. What's in? What's in this budget? Bigger government, a higher deficit, and runaway inflation. What's out? According to this budget, national defense is no longer a priority of the Biden administration or of the Department of Defense. Border security is also on the back burner, along with the family-friendly tax policies we implemented under President Trump. President Biden and the Democrats are doubling down on every mistake they've made so far. Instead of doing their jobs, they're paying lip service to struggling businesses, to struggling stores on Main Street in your hometown, to crumbling bridges like Memphis, Tennessee, and roadways, and future generations of Americans who will come into this world owning their own personal chunk of our skyrocketing national debt. That is right, Madam President. If you have a child or a grandchild born this year, their share of the national debt is going to be about $80,000. Think about that. And think about what has happened to this debt. From President Washington to President George Bush. It was about $10.6 trillion. During the Obama-Biden years, that debt doubled. Then it was added to through the pandemic, and now one would be led to believe that this administration has decided they're going to take the credit cards and swipe them so many times they run the numbers off of them. Yes, this is the Biden surcharge at work. Forcing the American people to pay a premium just to live, cradle to grave, daylight to dark. They've got a list of tax hikes and increased fees for you. You hardworking Americans, you cannot escape it. And what a world they have decided they want to leave 
for future generations. I think it's awful. I'll tell you what, this budget is such a terrible representation of what America actually needs that back home in Tennessee, people are asking me, as I was home last week, they would come up to me and they would ask me if this was really a serious budget. It is so extreme. It is so huge. They would say, surely your Democratic colleagues are not serious about this. Surely President Biden is not serious about this budget. Still, my colleagues across the aisle are so eager to get this done that they're prepared to once again throw regular order out the window. My Democratic colleagues are living in an alternate reality. It's the only explanation for why they continue to insist that this country will be better off under a government that strips away your freedoms rather than guaranteeing them and tries to tell you how to live your life. Every minute of every day, from the time your feet hit the floor in the morning to the time you brush your teeth and get in bed at night. Now, when it comes to the Biden administration, big government is their theme, not only of the day, but of every day. It is the theme when it comes to spending, to regulations, and even intrusions into constitutionally mandated state authority. Before the state work period, the majority leader indicated that he intends to use this month to shove through yet another wish list item. My Democratic colleagues have tried several times to skip debate and sneak through various provisions of their S-1 election takeover bill. They tried to do this for the same reason President Biden released his disastrous budget on a Friday. After everyone had already left town, it's because the bill could not survive a fair news cycle once the American people knew what was in it. And to my Democratic colleagues, remember the American people know after we went through Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act that the current Speaker of the House then had said, well, we have to pass this bill so we can read it and find out what is in it. They know that that is the way you like to operate. I'm sure many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle would dispute my characterization of the bill. So for the benefit of the record, let's go through a few of the provisions they're absolutely convinced will somehow expect, expand freedom and secure our elections. So this is what you will find in their S-1 election takeover bill. It would require states to allow ballot harvesting and no excuse mail-in balloting, which we know from experience will open the door to fraud. We know this. So are they intentionally trying to open the door for fraud? You're right, people are correct in asking that question. It would also overrule state level voter ID laws, another great way to guarantee rampant fraud. So yes, you heard me correctly. They want the federal government to tell your state that you cannot require someone to prove their identity to show an ID in order to do what? Vote in an election. How about that? It would weaponize the FEC against minority parties, mandate donor disclosure, and require the federal government to match private contributions. You heard me right. They want your tax dollars to go fund people that are running for office, even if you don't agree with their opinions. Your money would be going to them 
to match the contributions that they are raising. And by the way, it's a six to one match. Pretty convenient, isn't it? Well, I call it insanity. Anyone who has ever staffed a polling place or helped count ballots knows this. And yet, here we are, staring down yet another attempt to put this bill on the fast track, taking away the state's authority to run elections in their state. Well, here's what I say to my Democratic colleagues. You're not going to get the benefit of a quiet news cycle on this. America is watching and listening, and they are paying attention. Your attempts to whip the Senate into a state of partisan warfare over a bill you don't have the votes to pass will not go unnoticed. Your attempts to make another run at the filibuster and invent a mandate the voters refused to give you will not go unnoticed. Your attempt to sneak through this unconstitutional partisan power grab is not going to go unnoticed. People are paying attention, and my Republican colleagues and I are going to stand up against it. Members of your own caucus have said they will not stand for it. But most importantly, the American people they're watching, they're listening, they're paying attention, and they do not stand for what you are seeking to do. I yield the floor.